Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the fantastic built-in container support that Microsoft added in .NET 7, making the need for something like a Docker file basically obsolete. There's still cases where you might need it, but for the vast majority of people using this new feature, all you need is a single command. And that's it, you're gonna have a Docker container without having to deal with a Docker file where you have to worry what you should package, where it should live, and worry about all those paths. None of that is needed anymore. All you need is a single command. And we're gonna see how you can do that in this video. If you like those content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchampses.com. Now, before I move on, I just wanna remind you that today is the last day of my massive Black Friday discount at nickchampses.com, which is where I have all of my full length courses. So if you don't want to miss your chance to buy one of those courses at a discount, you can go at nickchapsas.com right now and use discount code BF2022 for 25% off any individual course or 15% off any of the already discounted bundles. So for more details, just check the link in the description. So let me show you what I have here. I have an empty solution and I'm going to go ahead and say create a new project. And if I wanted to add Docker support previously before these new CLI updates, then all I'd really need to say is that this is the weather API name project and then go all the way down here and say Docker support and from disable, which is usually the default, select Linux because that's what you should really be using. And this means I would get Linux container Docker support. And if I went ahead and created this project now in this solution, then as you can see, I am getting all the controllers and the settings and everything that I would normally get, but I'm also getting two extra files. This Docker ignored, telling Docker when it's building the image, they should ignore these things over here. And also the Docker file itself describing how the image should be built. And as you can see here, the wizard was smart enough to detect that this is an ASP.NET Core project using the right version because this is a .NET 7 project, exposing the right ports and then trying to be smart about where the project is and try to find relative paths. Those are wrong, by the way, but it's okay. We're going to talk about that. And then it's pulling the runtime and it's pulling the SDK as well. The SDK is doing the building and the publishing and then the runtime is doing the running. And now to build this Docker image and run it, all I need to do is first move this Docker file on the solution level because from what I can see, that's where it expects to be located, even though it is a bit of a weird location, but let's just go by this Docker file over here. So now it has been moved on the solution level and to build this, all I need to say is Docker build everything and tag it as a weather API with version 0.0. One. And this is going to go ahead, pull all the layers, pull all the images, and then create my Docker image. It is now created. And what I can do now to run it is simply say Docker run on internal port 80 and external port 5000 with the weather API 0.1 version. If I go ahead and do that, as you can see, my API now is running in Docker and it is exposed in port 5000. You see that this is actually true. I'm going to go to Postman and try to call it. And as you can see, this is returning correctly what it should be returning through the Docker container. And we can actually see the Docker container running over here in Docker. This is exactly the application. Now, this is all right, but the more you have to deal with these paths and knowing what you have to copy in the project for the Docker image to work, and the more projects you have as well, this gets quite a bit elaborate. For example, this is what a Docker file looks like for one of the clean architectures projects trying to pass environment variables and then expose the ports and then try to copy the right things. And as you can tell, this can get tedious, this can get out of hand. So what I'm going to do is simply delete those Docker file and Docker ignore files completely. They don't exist anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and do two things now. First, I'm going to go into NuGet and add in this project the package microsoft.net.build.containers. And this is a bit of a magical package that now will make our project be a bit self-aware that it can run and can be packaged into a container. And this is another effort towards that cloud native thing that Microsoft is trying to push. And the whole idea of what a cloud native application is an application that knows that it's supposed to run in a cloud environment. That's really what it is. And now that I have that, I'm going to go into the weather API folder. And just for the avoidance of doubt, this is the API that I'm running, not the solution, not anything else, just the thing that I want to execute basically and publish. And just like that, I'm going to say .NET, no Docker, just .NET, publish for OS Linux for architecture x64. And then I'm going to pass a P parameter, which is basically the same thing as having something in here at this level. Oh, and I should point out that this thing isn't actually needed. This was there just because I enabled Docker support before. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. But imagine that the parameter I'm passing down now could be a parameter in here as well in the CS project. And that's going to be 
publish profile equals default container. So we're going to go ahead and press enter. And as you can see now, the publishing will start, things will get triggered, and our .NET will automatically build a Docker image for me. It's going to use the name and try to give it a default version because I haven't specified one. I can, but it detected that the project is called Weather API. And by default, it went ahead and posted it in my local registry in my local Docker daemon. And this was without me having to specify a single line of code when it comes to a Docker file. It just did it automatically. And now for me to run this, all I need to say is the same thing as before, but now use the new version, which is 1.0.0. And if I do that, as you can see, the API is now running and I can go ahead and call it again. And this was built just with that command. And that's it. That's all you need. I think this feature is fantastic and such a good step towards the right direction. But it actually doesn't end there because you can customize this in any way you want. For example, if I want to set a default publishing version, I can actually just go ahead and copy that P parameter that I showed you over there, the publish profile one, and I can have it now in my CS proj. And the value for this was default container, meaning that if I want to do this in the future, I don't have to specify that P parameter anymore. All I need to say is this, and it will detect the P parameter from the CS proj. And now, as you can see, build the Docker image again. Now, this is amazing, but you might say, okay, Nick, I get this, but now I'm losing control of how I want to name my Docker image, the version I want to give it, what runtime or SDK I want to use. Like, I get that this is probably detecting that this is a .NET 7 project, and it's using the right one, but how does it know that it's a runtime or a web project? I want more control. Well, actually, you have full control of how you want this Docker image to be created. Now it is just in the CS proj. For example, if you wanted a different container image for your application and that refers to the runtime, then you can use the new container base image parameter here. And let's say if I want to use the runtime, all I need to say is just pass down the runtime and that's it. This new one will now be used. Of course, I need ASP.NET for this to really work, but as you can see, I can change it. Then you might say, oh, Nick, I'm on AWS, I'm using ECR, I'm not using my local daemon to push an image or Docker Hub, then how can I change this? Then you can use the container registry parameter and pass down a custom parameter. Okay, but how about tagging? Because now this creates the same Docker image with 1.0.0 every single time. Well, we have the container image tag parameter now. Yeah, Nick, but what if I want to tag the version, but also retag it as a latest? Well, you can use multiple ones with a container image tags and separate by semicolon. It doesn't actually just stop at the basics. For example, do you want to have a different port, container port? You can specify that here and this will work and you can specify the type as well. Do you want to have a container label? This is also supported. How about environment variables? Well, sure, you can pass them using container environment variable. And you can even control the entry point. For example, if you want to run .NET EF as the container entry point, then you can totally do that. So there's tons of extensibility on this. And yes, there are a few caveats and they're mostly around authentication on different uh, container registries. And I'm sure that they're going to improve the support on this in the future. But I really like where it's going. And I really like that all I need to do now to control my Docker image is this. I now don't have to manage a separate Docker file and keep it up to date. And by the way, you might be thinking, I really don't want to hard code my image tags in here. Well, you can go back and just use them as a parameter, right? And you can still say that P container image tag 1.0.1 and as part of your build, you still have everything in here, but you override or you add the things you want to customize as part of your build. This is a very nice system. I'm a big fan of it. And I'm really glad that Microsoft is doing this. But what do you think? Do you think it's useful? And do you like the whole cloud native approach that Microsoft is taking in this? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making it as possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.